And you're like, this is, what yes. is this, ketchup? <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> mm, yeah. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. And this week, courtesy of traveler Keith McCarty, uh, beers from Cincinnati. We got two beers from Cincinnati. He was coming, he was driving across the country to his next contract, and uh, knowing the fastest way to our hearts is through beer, yeah. or with beer, um, he brought us two beers from Cincinnati, one from Mad Tree Brewing Company, and the other from 50 West Brewing Company. You know, Cincinnati is known as the Queen City. Why is that? I don't know. I didn't know these were Cincinnati beers. Had I known that until right now, I would have done a little bit different research. So I went a different route. But okay. I do know that that is a nickname. The what else do I know about Cincinnati? The Queen City. Yeah. The Bengals suck. Well, that's mm. true. The Bengals are pretty awful. They're pretty terrible. Um, mm. What else? Oh, they like chili there. Right? We did a well, Atlas. Did we do an Atlas uh, Eats, didn't we? Two. Two of them. The chilies. Again. It's not really chili. It's it? not chili. It's like. It's meat like sauce. Yeah, it's like meat sauce. Meat sauce with Whoa. cumin Mediterranean <laughs> spices. It's Skyline, right? Isn't yeah. that the name Skyline of it? Skyline and yeah. Gold Star were the two. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, they're not it's not chili. But they put it on they put it on noodles, which is super weird. Yeah, like spaghetti noodles. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I Dolan seemed to like it. He's I'm definitely a Skyline fan. Mm. Mm. I was a Gold Star guy. He looks so. like he's a pasta fan in general. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> goulash. Goulash is probably there one of my See, favorites. I, was, I wasn't going to go there, but Dolan is eating his lunch as we... Uh, yeah. It's been a busy day here at Atlas, and so... Very. It's been a good day, but it's been busy. It has. All right, so just just purely because I went in the order, uh, I went 50 West first, and then I went into Mad Tree. So let's Sounds try. good. Let's do 50 West. That's 50 the West same West. reasoning I did. Fantastic. All right, so... 50 West Brewing Company, 7668 seven, six, Wooster Pike. Or is it Worcester? Worc- Worcester? I think if you're in Massachusetts, it's Worcester. Worcester. How's it spelled? W-O-O-S-T-E-R. I think that sounds like a Wooster. Yeah, Wooster. Wooster. Wooster Pike in Cincinnati, Ohio. Open Monday, 11 to 9. Tuesday through Thursday, 11 to 10. Friday and Saturday, 11 to 11. And Sunday, they open early at 10 and close at 9. Uh, on the very bottom of their webpage, I always like the little sayings they have here. Okay. That each one has a little different one. Theirs is, every beer is a journey. Join us for the ride. That's pretty good. I, I like that. I dig it. Oh, what kind of beer? This is just an IPA? Is that how we're... It says coast to coast IPA. Hmm. Oh, is it one of those... Um, what, what was the last... The mountain IPAs? Mm. I don't know. This says toast to the coast. Hints of fruit and dank. The east meets west. Oh. So it, it very well could be like that, Dolan. Interesting. There are some mountains on the can. Are there mountains in Ohio? I don't know. Hmm. The Adirondacks? Do they, they sneak in there maybe somehow? Maybe. I'm not sure. Great. So I don't know. These have all been questions we could have asked Keith if he were here. You know what I think it is. And, and uh, boy, what a segue this is going to be, fellas. <laughs> if I look at the can a little bit more, mm-hmm. oh. there's U.S. Route 50 right on, the, right on here. Bang, right, 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 right. Which is roughly twenty five hundred mile stretch of road, United States. Okay. These are the Rocky Mountains. Uh, There's the Archway of St. Louis right there. There we There's go. Washington D.C. Ah. This is the road that goes all the way to California. This is fifty west, right? It cuts right. right across the middle of the United States, and on okay. the can, if you see the United States on the map there, there's a line right through it. At the bottom of the map, on right by your thumb. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's at, the highway. There, look at that. And bada boom, that's what I did research that's on That's your research. I did not know the can. I didn't know that was there, so. What a fun coincidence. Oh, jeez. That is not a fun coincidence. <laughs> okay, so Dolan is 100% right. This is a mix hmm. between east and west. Then I'll probably really like it. I it like smells it. smells fruity. 
It does. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's exactly what I thought it would be. This is their flagship beer. I can see why. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I really like that. that How's it go with goulash? Too late? Great. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Rave it review. Hmm. All right, Ooh, so that's really good. Isn't it? Like the second half came through and it like, oh yeah, mm, I'm going to be just barely sipping that one. Not that, not that we ever would do this, but we've talked about like labels and cans mm -hmm. and artwork or whatever. Yeah. And there are definitely some that go just like crazy over the top. Uh -huh. You're like, oh my gosh, that's just like eye explosion yeah. or whatever. Like there's a ton of information just on this can. Oh, for sure. It tells a story, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Like if you didn't. I didn't know this information before I did my research, and geez, I just had to look at the can, and it did it for me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this beer is really good. Holy cow, this is good. I don't know if it's the leftover goulash in my mouth <laughs> or what, but this is really easy drinking for me, and Isn't I'm not it? a mm. huge IPA person. So on the other side of the can, it says craftsmanship, patience, innovation, and tradition. Hmm. It's like on a compass. Those are definitely things you need to make beer. Definitely. Very cool. Patience. That's I really, this is like a, it's not like the most eye candy-ish. No. But there's a lot of information on it. It's Very a, cool. It, it, it's almost like when you don't want to go to class, but mm -hmm. then you get to class yeah. and you learn something that you never thought you would learn. Like if I was in U.S. history class in college and I skipped mm -hmm. and I went to this brewery and I got one of those, mm -hmm. it'd be like I was in class getting extra credit. So this will count as a CEU. Yeah. So No, I'm kidding. Oh, I it wish would, it did. That would be so be awesome. Cheap CEU. That would be so awesome. All right, so hit me with some 50 West knowledge, and then I'll, I'll do my brewery business after All that. All right. Well, it's about 3,000 miles from what I could tell. It stretches from, it connects into the interstate system, too, of our United States. So this was okay. pre-interstate. Um, connects in Sacramento, which is, I think... Represented over here someplace. With the, the Golden Gate Bridge, maybe? Mm, or the yeah, bridge, whatever. Yeah, the bridge, okay. yeah. Towards, you know, Northern California. Sure. I guess that's more Central California, Sacramento. Yeah. yeah. And then Ocean City, Maryland, which is very close to Washington, D.C., which we have on there as well. We have the capital. Um, it goes through the biggest cities it really goes through, Kansas City, St. Louis, Washington, D.C., and Cincinnati. Right through the heart. Does it go south of Denver, then? I think it does. Okay. Here's the states it runs through. Okay. California, Nevada, Utah, Kansas, Colorado, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, and D.C., which is not a state. But it goes through there, too. Starts there, ends there. Well, so it just so it just cuts up into Colorado, on the yep. south side of Colorado. Just on the south side. And then into Kansas. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it was basically started or created, the first part of it was paved 1926. Not even paved, but just like ma marked out, right? Mm -hmm. 1926. Um, there is, I guess, a naming system in the United States for roads. So if it goes east and west, it has a an even number. Okay. And if it goes north-south, it has an odd number. This is a history lesson. This, so like, is, this is like social studies. So like I-80... Yeah. Goes east and, west. east and west. Same with this one. Mm -hmm. um, where do you think like Highway 1 in California goes up mm -hmm. the coast? That's yeah. an odd number because it goes north-south. Mm -hmm. I so grew up on Highway 81, which okay. goes north and south all the way from like the Canadian border to Mexico and oh, cuts wow. all the way through like Kansas, Nebraska. It cuts all the way through. It goes right through my hometown, 81. 81 does? Yeah. Through Columbus. Through Columbus. That's right. Because we would take Highway 81 to Columbus to go see my grandma and then we would turn to the... That's, east to go to Skyler. It's interesting too because knowing that you lived in Platte Center for a while. Yes. Platte Center is right off 81. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Isn't that cool? We just packed up and went south. Yeah. So like highway close to us is well 75. Yep. 77 goes down towards Beatrice, Kansas that way. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it makes sense when you think okay. about it, but I've never really had it in, in my face like I did in this research. So... That makes more sense. I-180, that's another thing I always heard. Like if it goes around a city, we'll have an, an extra number in it. Mm -hmm. oh. So it doesn't go through the town. It goes around it. Okay. That's like uh, what they're just doing here um, between, so like right on the Nebraska border all the way to Sioux City, mm -hmm. uh, 680, mm -hmm. which is just the north and south to I-80, mm -hmm. right? So once it goes over the border in Iowa, it's changing to 880 mm -hmm. because people were confused by, oh, which 680 are you on? The one in Nebraska or the one in Iowa? Even, I mean, they were two miles apart. So. Yeah. 
but they just are now just like yeah. last week announced that change. Yep. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, let's see. The same route pretty much was followed 50 years before that with the Pony Express. Okay. So that was like a, a time tested way to get across the United States. And that's kind of why they use the same route. Um, it goes through, there's a stretch of it in Nevada that's called the, oh, what is, it was so crazy cool. I wrote it down. The loneliest road in America. Oh. So there's like no towns, no trees, no farm. It's just desert, right? Okay. And it's about a hundred and something miles from what I could tell. So like you better have gas if you're driving through this thing. Not the kind of gas that Nolan, Dolan has at work every with day. Go, with uh, his goulash right. lunch. But, exactly. Um, yes. Yeah, gas in your car. Mm-hmm. And let's see, did I have anything else about the highway itself? I thought that was neat. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, you know what? This, is, this might be one of the best IPAs we've ever done. It's so good. It is. It really is good. I'm I'm looking to see because there's so Keith brought us three different six packs. So there are five more of these back in the oh, secret beer fridge. Oh, <laughs> I want somebody to go back and get another one for us yeah. so we can keep drinking yeah, it. Page, page somebody or text them. Wow. Hit them with the nine one one on the beeper. Yep. We uh, need an so, intercom system in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. That would be kind of nice. The well, beeper. It would, it would be abused quickly though. Oh, it, mm-hmm. would, it definitely would. Yeah. Um. So w- sometimes what you do on a road is you have to take a detour. Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to do right now. Okay. Detouring out of my research into a separate set of research. <laughs> <laughs> One of the towns this goes through Nevada, near that road, that's the loneliest road in America, mm-hmm. um, is a town called Ely, Nevada. Okay. And Ely, Nevada is famous because, if you're like me, and um, Mr. Recruiter Eric out on the floor, we talked about Stephen King the other day on mm-hmm. the podcast. One of his Stephen King's books is based out of this town. And in fact, it's kind of two books. So I'm going to go into that just a little bit. Okay. Because it's probably, it's one of his lesser known books. Sure. It was one of the ones I read as it was coming out in the 90s. Like okay. when I was, I would have been about 16, I think, when this book came out, mm-hmm. 1994. Um, the book is called Desperation. And it, made, it was made into a movie. Oh. I've never heard of this. And the movie was not very good. Oh, uh, well. Most of his adaptations are not very good. Mm. So I'm going to, I wrote down just a little bit of like the book synopsis. Mm-hmm. And then why it's kind of cool. So the story basically um, is, oh, this is interesting too. I'll give you a little backstory as to Stephen King actually heard this. Okay. So kind of not unlike The Shining, Mm -hmm. where he stayed at the hotel. Uh At the the Stanley or mm -hmm. the Overlook. Right. Right. Uh Very similar to that. He just happened to be on vacation driving around and got to this like old ghost town. Oh. And was, from what this guy said in the story, he was wearing a t-shirt that said, yes, I'm Stephen King. Because, like, I guess everybody was like, whoa, are you Stephen King? And he would just be like, yeah, I am. There you go. But he's in a town with, like, nobody, like 50 people, right? <laughs> so he rolls into this, I guess it would have been a bar mm-hmm. with the town historian. And he, this historian tells him this question or this story about um, the mine. There was, like, mines in this area. It might have been a silver mine. And in late 1880s, a mine shaft collapsed and trapped 10 Asian workers under the ground. Okay. And the owner of the mine was like, boy, we should really get them out, uh, but that's expensive. <laughs> It'd actually be cheaper to just go get 10 new Asian guys. Oh, my gosh. And that's what they did. Oh, geez. So they left them to die oh. in this, under this ground. And it took 100 years before somebody actually found the bodies. And they were so, because that would have been in the 80s, around yeah. the time Stephen King was going through this place. Okay. That would have been fresh news for him. Sure. Um, they were so well-preserved under the ground with like no little, probably little to no humidity and stuff, mm-hmm. the people that found the bodies actually thought they were recent miners. Oh my gosh. And like, so uh, they were working, working a mine maybe, and they actually used some of the tools that they found with the, with the bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, so Stephen King was like, that is an amazing story, puts it in his brain mm-hmm. and then extrapolates it a little bit later and puts his scary twist on, well, what happened if you actually... You know, if those miners didn't die of, like, natural causes, what if something was in the ground, something evil oh. took place? What what could happen if, if you unwittingly unleashed this ancient evil into mm-hmm. this ghost town? And that's basically the story of, oh. of the town. He called it Desperation. Hmm. That book is 704 pages. Now, this is the cool part, and I'm, I don't know of any other author that would, could or would do this. Mm-hmm. 
he has another name that he writes books under, named Richard Bachman. Mm-hmm. It's like his pen name, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it was The Thinning. Do you remember that? It's like a story that was a short story made into a movie where the guy, um, he got cursed or something, and he just got skinnier and skinnier. Mm, thinner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, he wrote that as Richard Bachman. Mm-hmm. And pre-internet, nobody knew that that was, ri- that was really Stephen King. Oh. Right? So it, like somebody leaked it to the press, and it was going to get put out there. Mm-hmm. So he basically killed that pen name, and he didn't use it for almost 15 years. Okay. So then... He brings that pen name out of retirement, basically saying, this is the you know widow of this author, uh, was going through his trunk of stuff in his writing room, and I found this manuscript, and this is exactly how it was. That's how he spun it, to use his pen name. Interesting. So he writes a book called The Regulators, which takes place in, I think it was Indiana or Ohio, Okay. but it has the same exact names of the characters in the other book. So it's like a flipped... Um, universe. So hmm. everybody's the same name and they have the same job in this town versus this town. Okay. But the what happens in the story is totally different. Oh. So it's like the flip flop of a coin, basically. Mm-hmm. So he takes the same names, the same bad guy, quote unquote, mm-hmm. makes a totally different story out oh. of it. Releases both books on the same day. Okay. And if you took, if you got first editions of hard copies of those books, mm-hmm. you put them together, it made one image. No. Oh. So separately, they looked like something, but if you mm-hmm. put them together, it was like you could tell it was one big image. Is one what picture. It was supposed to be. Okay. And that had never, from what I could find, quick research that had never really happened before, where they took the same characters and told a totally different story. Right. Like you've seen, you know, sequels and whatnot. Sure. Prequels and things, but this was like a totally different reimagined story with the same name. So that's my detour wow. information out of Ely, Nevada. Interesting. So it was a pretty good book from what I remember. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty classic Stephen King, more psychological. It's mm-hmm. like uh, this evil is looking for a host and it needs mm-hmm. to continue its quest to do whatever it's doing. And yep. um, it's more about how people react to each other. Mm. The scariness of each other dealing with people versus the actual monster. The monster. Yeah. Usually in those stories, the people are the monster. But what the people do to other people yes. is, mm-hmm. the, is bad. That's definitely one of his like hallmarks as far as when he writes his stories. Yep. So, so that's in that town off of that road. It's probably what he was driving would mm. be my guess was he was just cruising down that road and yep. heard that story and became a book a few yep. years later. Interesting. So... That's what I got for you on that Interesting. one. Interesting. Huh. I, I, I never thought we'd take a Stephen King turn on this one, but okay. Well, when I could, I did. I like it. Yeah. I like it. See, you just don't know what you're going to get. No, you don't. You never know what to expect. Like this beer. Mm-hmm. I did not expect something this To delicious. like it this much, Oh, huh? man. And you guys, yeah, yours is gone. Mm-hmm. Dolan's nursing his like I am. Mm-hmm. This was good. Oh, my gosh. Keith, thank you so much for this one. This was... I was really, I was surprised. Every beer is a journey, and this, I'm very happy to be on this yeah, ride with them. I really like this one. So, interesting about the brewery, it's located in a former roadside speakeasy on okay. US 50. Oh. So, uh, heading west into the city of Cincinnati, 50 West Brewing Company was first opened in November of 2012 by Bobby Slattery. Um, in 2017, which is the most uh, up to date information I could find. Uh, they were the f- they were in the, the fifty largest breweries in the country. They were part of the fifty largest breweries this one in the is? country. This one is okay. Uh, they were number forty nine as of two thousand and seventeen. Um, hmm. They were the fifth largest in the greater Cincinnati area. In, so they have five out of the top fifty. They have yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, they uh, let's see two thousand seventeen sixty five hundred barrels sold in oh. two thousand seventeen. Yeah. So. Just two years old. But yeah, so they are the fifth largest in Cincinnati. Um, in, on, back on April 5th of this year, they announced an expansion of, in probably one of the coolest ways I've ever seen, they filmed a, a little, because I, I love internet content video, mm-hmm. of them getting in a Volkswagen bus with a six-pack of this. Yeah. And he's just got a six-pack of it. They hop in a Volkswagen bus, and they start driving east. And they, Chillicothe, here we come. And, oh, wow. They're, uh, they're, they expanded to Chillicothe. They have a, a brew pub there. Hmm. I think it's east. I don't know. Yeah. Well, wherever Chillicothe is in relation to just okay. Cincinnati. And you just see it's kind of a drone, like drone footage of them backing up. And we're coming to Chillicothe. But and, they stayed on 50. 
on f- Highway 50. On Highway 50, yes. Nice. So it's, it has to be east or west, I assume. Yeah. So, and I guess that was, he just, uh, Bobby was driving one day and got into Chillicothe and <laughs> so figured out, hey, there's no, there's no brew pubs here. Well, maybe we should come here. Plant the flag. So there you go. Wow, cool. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's what I know about them, it, which is interesting because this next beer that we're going to try from Mad Tree, mm-hmm. Mad Tree looks larger. Mm-hmm. And they're and they are large. They're the second largest brewery in Cincinnati. Okay. So I wonder how. Who's the first? Is that Rhinegast or whatever it's called? I would assume that's it. Yes. Because I know for a while Rhinegast or whatever they're called, they were making beers for Trader Joe's. Oh. So like when Trader Joe's has their own brand of beer, mm-hmm. that's who actually was contract brewing the, those beers. Interesting. Yeah, mm. I'm. I'm going to assume that they're they're the largest. But I don't. I don't know that for I sure. I wrote down one thing about this brewery because okay. I just looked at it just for a second. But I want to remember what it was because it was a pretty big number. On their website, they had an updated tap list as of like four days ago. Okay. Thirty-two beers. What? Really? Yeah, and it was like six different IPAs. Holy cow! Yeah. So before we get into the next one, there from Mad Tree, let's hit the old untapped. Six point eight percent, which seems about right. Sixty yeah. IBUs. Doesn't taste like sixty IBUs at no, all. No, it doesn't. I, I almost think that I've I've learned this a little bit through our beer journey. This the IBU thing is I, you never kind of overhyped, really. You never want to use it. I never ever want to use that as a indicator of whether or not I yeah. would like the beer, even though I don't like. See, this one more. smells more bitter. What this one? This one does. Yeah. All right. So let's let's wrap up this one here. What do you think? Nine thousand two hundred and forty-eight on the untapped. I think there's going to be three point six eight. Four point two. Whoa. Three point seven four. Yeah. Not too too bad. That's pretty good. I'd go straight up four to four two five on this. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm definitely going at least a four. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. more. Hmm. All right. So the next one from Mad Tree Brewing Company at thirty three oh one Madison Road in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, these guys are hardcore. Monday through Thursday, eleven to one a.m. Uh, Friday, was it uh, Friday? I wrote 11 to 1 a.m. That's not right. So Friday, they're open a lot. Saturday, 10 to 1 a.m. And Sunday, to uh, 10 to 11. Founded in 2013. Um, they are located in the Oakley neighborhood of Cincinnati. Oakley? Oakley, like okay. the sunglasses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, currently in a 7,000 square foot tap room attached to a 10,000 square foot outdoor beer garden. So, you said they were the second, or was that... This one, yeah. So this one, Mad Tree, is the second largest brewery in Cincinnati. Oh, the second largest. I, I yes. thought second started. No, largest. I was like, that's not true, because 50 West started in mm-hmm. 13. No. Got it. Yep. So this one's bigger, so it's got to be more, probably in the 30s of the top 50 breweries, maybe? I, I would, maybe, yeah. I wonder if we have any. I wonder if we have any, but I, I wouldn't know. think so. Not. I don't know. This was all as of 2017, though. That, yeah. That's the most up-to-date information I could find. Um, Google listed uh, one owner, uh, Kenny McNutt, as the as the owner. But then uh, if you look up the Ohio Craft Brewers Association, there's three of them. Jeff Hunt, Brady Duncan, and Kenny McNutt as the three this is three owners, so I don't know. Maybe maybe Kenny's got access to the Google uh, sign yeah, in. He, maybe he's like, yeah, that's me. Yep. Whatever, Brady and Jeff. Top fan of this brewery. That's right. <laughs> that's me. Um, the one thing I wrote down for you here before I try this beer, mm-hmm. uh, their beer looks really good. Their tap list looks huge. Mm-hmm. Their pizza that they serve mm-hmm. there. Oh, I didn't even look at that. I'm going to have to go back. Their pizza looks fantastic. Why do I do this to myself? Why do I look at pictures of food and breweries (laughs) that we can't get to? It's not like I can just hop over there and try the pizza. Yeah. But I'm going to want to now. Yeah. Mm. It it looked pretty, actually, in my little research here, like their pizza looks as good as their beer. Oh, It looked... (laughs) It looked like like that's, your second home right there. That sounds pretty good. If I ever get to Cincinnati, I guess we'll know where to find me. Man, this has got way more of a <laughs> way way hoppier smell. Way hoppier. Mm-hmm. You know, to me though, it doesn't taste hot. It it what it says on the can. I don't know if you saw on the bottom, but I don't want to. I don't want you to see it if you can. Okay. <clears throat> it definitely. Dolan's scared of it. But are you gonna die over there? Are you okay? I think the. 
I mean, finish your thought because I'm gonna it's comment. It's floral. On it. it is floral. Very. Yes. I mean, it's that's it tastes like like what you would smell like a apple blossom tree or something like. Mm-hmm. It has that sort of almost a saisony finish, mm-hmm. not dry, but in that sort of sweet, mm-hmm. flowery way. And that was that's exactly what I was gonna say. Because you expect it to be like bitter hoppy the way it tastes up front, but then it kind of like crashes down with that floral stuff. It it doesn't it doesn't like squeeze my cheeks, you know. Mm. Bitter wife. Six point, facial cheeks, that is the one. 6.9%, so just a little bit stronger. Just a little. Yeah. yeah. So this beer is, it, it, there's a pronunciation on the back. Okay. So, because I didn't know how to spell it. It looks like psychopathy. Yeah. That's not how you pronounce it. It's psychopathy. 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 Because it has hop in the name. Mm. It looks like psychopathy, though. Yeah. Psychopathy. <laughs> well. Psychopathy. See, the thing about IPAs is you want to try to get hop in the name somewhere, right? Of course. There's a lot of them out there. You're running out of chances to to make a word with hop in the middle. So I guess that's how they did it. So I assume, look at the can here. Look at the front of the can. Yeah. It, it's, the, it's the Mad Tree logo that is like reversed, right? I mean, it looks like it's a mirror image, right? Uh, is that what it is? I, you know what the first thing that drew my eye... You know how sometimes you'll see those pictures? I think one of them is looks like a candlestick, and it's two faces looking at each other. Exactly. I thought that's what the tree was, and I was trying to figure out, like, okay, what's going on with this tree? It there's, looks like there's a scary face in there, doesn't it? You know what? I, I should pay you for this. This is a slam dunk <laughs> into my research, Rich. Oh, my goodness. Brian and I sit on, I wouldn't say opposite sides of the office. Yeah. But the far only, enough away. Far enough away that the only thing we really talk about on on the day that we record is what time we're going to do it yeah yeah and, oh and, and the beer to make sure that we got the right one right because yeah. there has been times where he's like oh no it's this one instead of what right. we're actually doing so well the way you pronounced it first psychopathy yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> it ties into that oh can okay so you, you know what that thing's called the one you know what this is called w- which part oh the, the face? scary face uh-uh. oh no is that a rorschach it sure is. All right. Mm-hmm. Boom. That's our research. Rorschach. Rorschach test. Okay. I was like, okay, that's exactly what that was when I saw it online. And uh, so, yeah, so I did some research on that. And that's why it's, that's why you thought it was like, pronounced that way. Like blot. Ink blot. Ink blot. Yeah. Exactly yeah. what it is. Okay. Uh-huh. So basically what it is, the Rorschach test is your perception of ink blots. And then what you say that you see mm-hmm. is then analyzed and there's like a scale, a graded scale interpretation of what you say that you saw. So you saw a scary face in there, right? So oh, if we yeah. were doing this as a test, yep. then that would equate to a certain score. And then they add up your score after you would do about 10 of these in a row. Okay. And then they figure out basically either your personality mm-hmm. or what basically some sort of deep psychological stuff with you by what you see in something that has no actual answer. Okay. There is no answer. I actually had to take one of these tests once. Really? For I, what? I did. Uh, to adopt Maddox. To, we had, to, we had hmm. to see a psychologist, I would say. Okay. I assume psychologist. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they don't prescribe medicine, so that would be a psychologist. Okay, yeah. there we go. So we had to see a psychologist. Um, did you go over like a, a, a profile, mm-hmm. right? Each one of us talked to him or whatever. Then we took these little tests with the circles, and then we had to do the ink plot test or oh. whatever. I have the results somewhere. I've always been kind of scared. They still let us adopt a child from overseas, yeah, right? So it, couldn't so have it been, couldn't yeah. have been that bad. Like, this guy's going to be like a serial red killer. Red flags everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> right. I don't know. Yeah. Well, here's, here's how it works, I guess, kind of. And I did a little bit of research on just the person that, who did it. So you're supposed to... What they're used for now is detect underlying thought disorders. So that's what they were doing with you. Okay. Just to make sure that you mm. were... You that were I wasn't. sane and, and sure. stable. Okay. It's named after a Swiss psychologist named Herman Rorschach. Hmm. And he created this in 1921. So it's been around about 100 years. Okay. Which is kind of scary to think that they're still using this test, mm-hmm. a psychology test, 100 years later. Ooh, With all the advancements in science and stuff, this is still being used. There must be something to it, I guess. There must be. Maybe. Because mm-hmm. here's what we don't know. Okay what he really intended it for because he died about six months after this was created. Get out. So he made this, he had all this like information set up. Okay. Here's the scoring. Here's how you grade it. Mm-hmm. And then he never really got to see it work cause he was dead. Oh. He, he'd done a bunch of research ahead of time to like figure out how the scores were going to be and what categories they were supposed to fall under, mm-hmm. but he never got to really see it in practice. Interesting. He used it basically 400 people total 
300 of which were like from an institution or asylum, hospital, someone oh, that actually had some problems. Okay. And then there was 100 control patients. So people that didn't have any issues. And he had about, oh, I think it was 400 of these ink blots that he made. Okay. And whoa, whoa, whoa. 400 like different ink blots? Oh. And then he showed them to all the people. And if, if he could get within, if, if most people saw the same thing or certain things, mm-hmm. then that would get pushed to a different pile. And he ended up whittled it down all the way to 10. Okay. So the official test is 10 ink blots. Mm-hmm. And they're all this, every 10 are the same, right? So he started out with this huge number, showed it to a lot of people. Then most people saw the same images mm-hmm. in these, and that's how it whittled it out. So either a bat or a scary face. Something like that, right? Okay. All right. Um, then once he died, other people like within his area, uh, expertise field, picked up this research and this test, and they started advancing it. So we don't really know what his actual intention was it for. Hmm. What he designed it for was to basically test for schizophrenia, which they didn't really even have a name for back then. Okay. But now it's used as just a general personality test, which is why you had to take it for mm-hmm. your thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so what his intention was versus how it's used is already different. And there's people that argue, well, this thing really shouldn't be used or valid anymore mm. because it's already going against the person that created it, what he created it for. Right. Understood, yeah. So it's been adapted by people that weren't involved with the initial research. A hundred years later, it's still being used. So I'm not schizophrenic. So that that's <clears throat> a bonus. I so you, yeah, you passed that test. Yeah, okay. Um, there are, keep your comments to yourself, Dylan. <laughs> there are, um, I guess these are the subgroups, right? Mm-hmm. So people see, depending on the ink blot, mm-hmm. and this one falls right square away. You hit the first one, human. Sure. So people will see faces or mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. doing things. Oh. There's nature elements. So mm-hmm. you might see a tree or a flower or a butterfly. There's animals, mammals specifically. Um, there's abstract things. Sometimes people will just be like, oh, it's it like, looks like three dots on a, in a line. Um, then there were things like fire. Some people would say they see fire. Okay. Clothing was an option. And then x-ray. So it was like, oh, it looks like an x-ray of a hand or it looks like the uh, inside of something. Sure, sure. So whatever you see, mm-hmm. when we all looked at the same thing and you saw a face and let's mm-hmm. say he saw a tree and I saw a penguin, mm-hmm. then those scores all are added in a different sort of way. They all have different values. Interesting. And then those are all added up. And then the other part is used is what part of the actual card you used to say what you saw. Oh. Versus like the whole piece. Was mm-hmm. it just a little bit of the thing? Like where you saw in the ink blot also is graded and scored. So it's a twofold test. So for example, on the can, it's the scary part. It's the middle. It looks like the scary face. Mm-hmm. All the rest of it is just, so this would be a different score than maybe a, on the sides, if you say, like, I see England or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, or, exactly. Yeah, the scary face in the middle, and then somebody could say, oh, that scary face is coming out of a cloud of smoke or from yeah, whatever you wanna, the bush. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you get scores mm-hmm. in that way, too. So okay. location and what you actually mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. Um, this test was and continues to be huge in Japan. Like, they base a lot of stuff on this test really? in Japan. Yeah. Like, they've really... I don't know if it's... I, I think that's a whole different show, but okay. um, there's a lot of things different about psychology in Japan than versus what's the United States. Um, and they tend to use this all the time, like even in job interviews and stuff Yep. before you get hired. In the 60s, this was used basically as a way to out people, like with their sex- sexuality. Really? They had a whole subgroup of things that would be like, okay, what do you see? And if they, depending on what they said... They would trace all those things and add them up and then be like, okay, you're, you're latently homosexual or whatever. And really? that was a big thing in the 60s, wow. which, another, which is another reason people are against this test. Well, yeah. And then it's still now, and like you said, it probably, I don't know if it was, was it through family court that this went through? It was through a, so it was through the adoption agency. Okay. So family, yes. Yeah, because there, a lot of them still are being court ordered. Um, juveniles have it a lot of times used for diagnostic purposes, basically. So like, okay, what sort of population should we put you into when you're in the system? Um. And then also things like, okay, you claiming insanity or, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. the court issues these all the time. 
So that's interesting that you bring it up because my I remember a story that my uh, dad told me is he actually had to do the ink block test uh, to see if he had ADHD when oh, he was okay. younger. Really? Um, and he remembers going into the room with the psychologist or therapist or psychologist probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, they gave him the ink blots and um, he, of course, was 13, 12, 13 years old. They're like, what do you see? He's like, ink blot. <laughs> <laughs> ink blot. And they're like, no, you like what pictures do you see i don't see any pictures all i see is spilled ink right yeah well after like 20 minutes of this and trying to explain like no you're supposed to like just make pictures out of wherever on the on the card and my dad of course at that age was not very i mean he was getting in a lot of trouble that's why he was being Mm -hmm. diagnosed for adhd right so um after about 20 minutes the psychologist was like um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with him. He's just a shithead. And he needs discipline. <laughs> <laughs> He's just messing with us. Yes. Oh, man, that's funny. Yeah, so the test failed there. Yeah. So. Or succeeded one of the two, I guess. Yeah, so, I guess. You know, yeah. We'll, we'll never know because the dude died. Yeah, the Rorschach guy. He is no longer around. Hmm. So that's that's what I got for history and just like kind of where it's used and what it is. But that was my, when I saw that, I thought, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to know about it. You hear that a lot. You see it in movies mm-hmm. all the time. Oh, yeah. I'd kind of like shows. to just take it just to get an evaluation. Yeah. Just to mm-hmm. see what. I bet you there's something online where you can I'm probably sure. take it or, probably. or do it. I didn't want to look at them because I didn't want to be, like, biased mm. ahead of time if mm. we actually did something right. like that. Mm. Um, but just probably knowing the categories probably mm-hmm. already skewed me a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit. But. That's yeah. how it goes. Huh, yeah. And then I guess for those of you that remember uh, comic books in the late 80s, The Watchmen, there was a character named Rorschach mm-hmm. who was awesome. Um, that show is beginning on HBO very soon, is it not? Or is uh, it already out? It is, yeah. And Rorschach's one of the characters, which is interesting because uh, who was the guy that played him in the movie? Because they did a Watchmen movie. It was, okay. Oh, what's his name? He has three names. He does. And it's not Haley Joel Osment. No. No, it's... It uh, was... He was in the Bad News Bears as a kid. He was? Yeah. He was the foul-mouthed kid in the Bad News Bears. I didn't know that. Um, gosh, Frank, Oh, gosh. It's, it is, it's three names. It's like Frank Joe or Frankie Joe or something like that. Um, but yeah, he was, he was in the Bad News Bears, and this was like his big comeback hmm. was being in that Watchmen movie. And then he he got some other roles after that, and might have even been nominated for an award if I remember right. Um, Jackie Earl Haley. Jackie Earl Haley, who if if Rorschach looked like a guy under the mask, it would look like this dude. Mm-hmm. Like that was a good cast. I think he did. He was like uh, played a killer or something re- real soon after that, hmm. and he's had pretty steady work since that since that movie. But that was his big like comeback. Pretty cool hmm. to go from a child actor. So many years where he didn't do anything. Yep. And then is in a, it was a pretty big movie. The, the best is, and for those of you, this is, this is my detour for the day. Mm-hmm. How's that? All right. Uh, if the best, there's a great line and I will not, I, I won't get it right, but in the comics it's even better. They do, they used it in the movie. Um, cause the, the Watchmen were superheroes, mm-hmm. but kind of anti superhero maybe yeah. ish. Um, and he's talking about the people who are just not, He's not a fan of whatsoever. He's not a fan of helping people, even though he is a superhero, so mm-hmm. to speak. Um, and he's talking about them, and he says that you know the, the people will look up and they'll stick their hand up and they'll ask for help, and I'll say no. <laughs> nice, it's just the best. Like, oh my gosh, I I, I think um, in that isn't the beginning of that movie, mm-hmm. um, blown in the wind, maybe by I, Bob Dylan. I think so. Yes, that's one of the coolest beginnings of a movie mm. I've ever seen. Yeah, because it was like time change, right? Yes. Didn't it? do that like Mm -hmm. different newspapers or something like blowing through and the role of the superhero changed over time yeah very cool beginning to that movie god i feel like it's underrated it the comic is underrated even to this day yeah because it was so groundbreaking and who wrote it was it Moore? alan moore yeah and he is crazy yeah he he was crazy back then he's super crazy now (laughs) but (laughs) yeah if you watch the, if you're watching the new HBO special, mm-hmm. uh, they talk about a crusty old graphic novel writer who is you know hates society or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're talking about Alan That's Moore. Him. He probably won't sign needs off the Rorschach test. He probably you probably don't want to know. Yeah, he would pass on that. So Ooh. yeah, but I read yeah. I read just a headline today because I'm trying not to get into it. Uh, isn't Regina King is in it? Mm-hmm. And I love her. She's a great actress. Yep. Uh, but they were saying, the person that, like the director of the show maybe, or the showrunner, mm-hmm. was saying like, we're trying to make Star Wars for TV. 
We're trying well. to get like that sort of scope and mm-hmm. have those sort of ca- memorable characters because characters are pretty good. Oh yeah, but I think most people just remember that big blue thing, the big blue dong. Yeah, on, on uh, was it yeah. Doctor Midnight? Doctor Midnight was, was that what his name was goes and lives remember. in goes and lives on Mars, but he doesn't wear pants and he's a big blue guy. Mm-hmm. And they weren't scared about showing his uh, no. private parts. That's right. I definitely remember that. Don, I'll send. Oh, uh, I There's will some sh- screen grabs. I have. Yeah, I'll show you some screen. Oh, grabs awesome! I, it's exactly yeah. what I wanted. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> yes. Wow, we've covered a lot of ground today. Not safe for work. No. Definitely not. I All guess right. it depends on where you work. So I'm going to go 50, no, I'm going to go 35 miles to the east of Cincinnati. Okay. I don't know if this is on Highway 50 or not. Could be. It's close. It's close. It's 50 adjacent. For bonus beer. Okay. So bonus beer, the last one that Keith brought us, it didn't necessarily have anything to do with Cincinnati, uh, but is in Williamsburg, Ohio, mm. is called Code 3 Cincinnati Red Ale from Old Firehouse Brewery. Okay. So bonus beer. I didn't do a lot of research on these guys yeah. just because they didn't fit into the Cincinnati bit, but I want to get it in there because Keith brought it to us. And, and we can't get this anywhere else. And you can't. And, yeah. And it is a, it's a red. And I... Uh, hmm. Ever since my trip to Alaska a couple years ago, I've been a fan of red, of red ales. So, it's a old. It, it is legitimately an old fire station where the brewery is. You did a little research. I on looked this. at it, and uh, it has the bay, the two big truck bays. Oh, um, the can. I mean, the code three. That's fireman speak, right? For a, like a bad fire, like an actual. I don't know. Okay. Sometimes they say. Um, Oh, what is it when they need more help? It like escalates. There's a number system. That, oh, I don't know. Uh, mm. Like a five alarm. That means, oh, yeah. you know, there's more. It has to go. The fire stations that re- respond, it grows out exponentially. Okay. The greater the alarm is. Hmm. Um, this has that. I don't know what the term for this is, but it's like on um, uh, like toolboxes and trucks. And it's like galvanized metal. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that has that texture on it. Yep. Uh, I'm that, and I guarantee you that's on like fire trucks, like on the where the toolboxes are, where they keep the axes and the hoses mm-hmm. and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Is there floaties in yours? And just floaties in mine. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, little little black floaties. Little black floaties. All right. Mm. Before you drink this one, I forgot the untapped on old uh, Mad Tree. All right. On, I don't want to taint my brain here. Psych hop a thee. It definitely tasted hoppier. It was which it should I guess with the name hop in it, right? Uh. Shockingly, it was the exact same IBUs. Really? Yep. I think it was the floral nature to it. Yeah. It, I was going to say, it, it wasn't very hoppy like right away. It was just... But in the aftertaste, it seemed like it mm. was. Maybe in it was the just the floral part. 46,000 check-ins that's on this one. That's a ton. That's wow. a lot. No, holy cow. That's like, what, six times as much almost? Mm-hmm. That's three, four. 3.4, you say? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go... Yeah, I'm going to go 3.62. 3.79. So <laughs> that's higher? solid. That's higher. But it's also got a ton more a ton more. I, it's know, more I true high IPA. At least a West. it's closer to a West Coast style. I get, Yeah, I guess so. And if that's what you're looking for, mm-hmm. whereas my style is way more the first one. And how long was this one been around for, the brewery? This one started in 2013. I, I haven't had a lot of beers with the floral taste that I like. To be honest, I'm not a yeah. huge saison fan either. Yeah, mm. I I agree. I think the, it tastes like perfume, like when you mm-hmm. like walk into a room. My mom, yep, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. That sometimes that happens with those. I think it's interesting. Like some of these breweries that have been around for six, seven, eight years, their flagship IPAs mm-hmm. are gonna be hoppier or mm-hmm. maltier, just because that was the style when they first started making beer, right? Yep. Whereas if you're now making a brewery in the last two years, your flagship is gonna be hazy or juicy mm-hmm. or low to none IBUs like yep. just a matter of when you started you know open up a shop basically mm-hmm. exactly all right so bonus beer let's try the uh, all right let's try this they call it Cincinnati's red ale it smells sweet it does mm. don't really think about a red ale you uh, I've always liked red ales mm. yeah the only one I can really think of it was Killigan's or whatever that is. Yeah. Kill, Killian's Irish. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I had a roommate in college who drank that all the time. Loved it. There is a um, um, upstream here in Omaha. I really like their, it's like Firehouse Red. Yep. Yeah. Or Fire Brick or something like that. Yeah, something like yeah. that. It's really good. Huh. This is a fire. So right on, right on the can, Code 3, understand 
what a true Cincinnati brew is all about. Fans are cheering and chant go out for the well-balanced, de- de- decidedly delicious red ale. Hmm. Think local, support your community, drink craft beer. It's very almost like biscuity, yep. malty, where that sweetness comes. It's close to... It's close to an Oktoberfest, it is. really, like yeah. a Marzen style. Mm-hmm. It really is. Hmm. Oh, yeah, now that you say that. Mm-hmm. It really is. Maybe that's why I like red ale so much, is that it kind of yeah, has that, that same... A little bit of sweetness. Mm-hmm. So let's check it's this out. It's not as red as some of the... No, it definitely isn't. The red ales that I've had. Yeah. Some of them get they get a little over the top with it, though. Right. Like, it gets a little crazy. And, and like, it's as red as the can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like, this is... What yes. is this? Ketchup? <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> mm, yeah. Okay, so code three, five point two IBUs. Or I'm sorry, five point two, five point two percent ABV. Mm-hmm. Eighteen IBUs. So yeah, nothing. Hardly any. Hardly no any. bitterness at all. Three thousand and ninety check-ins. What do you think here? Three point four eight. Mm, three point two. Three point five four. That's about where I would. That's about where I'd go to. Yeah. Yep. I think this would be pretty good with a pretzel. And if you had it on tap, like in a big, like a 24-ouncer, mm. I could probably crush one of those pretty yeah. easy. Now I want pretzels. <laughs> yeah. With a good stone. And you just had ground, goulash. Uh, mustard. Yeah. Mustard. Oh, mustard. Oh, mustard. Mustard. No. No? Oh, it turned off. Oh, I can hardly even drink this. <laughs> <laughs> I will, though. I'll drink it. Mm. Well, Keith, uh, like I said, the quickest way to our hearts is through beer. Yeah. Uh, it was good to see him when he stopped by. Keith has been with us for probably four. Just put the miles on, huh? A lot. Four years? Well, Adam's been recruiting for five. Yeah. So four ish years then. Mm. Yeah. Wow, cool. We've uh Keith has become not only a, a great traveler for us, but he's become a good friend. And nice. so uh he knew we would enjoy these beers. So he made a special trip as he was going west to come a little north and uh and drop these off and, and say hi to them. I feel like office. you don't often get that in this industry. You don't. A lot of nurses, mm-hmm. you know, just hop to where the pay packages are the best, and you know it, that's mm-hmm. expected. You know, sure. it's just a way of life. A lot of nurses have like five or six recruiters, so mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. You can have somebody work for your company for a long time. I love talking to Keith. Um, mm-hmm. If you end up working with a Keith McCarty mm-hmm. from Atlas, ask him about Europe and his time there. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. do it. That sounds like loaded. Oh man, so many good stories. Cool. You know, Brian, that's part. Of- one of the reasons, not only that we do this, but everything else that we do is we're trying to change the industry. We're trying to change mm-hmm. that, that it, it is about a paycheck. We all have a yeah. job, right? My job is your job and Dolan mm-hmm. has a job or whatever. But then if you, you want to have fun with what you do. Sure. And you don't necessarily always want to talk about work. I don't want to listen to a podcast about you know, the stuff that I do here. Yeah, that wouldn't be very fun. No, but Keith understands... You know why do we, why we do this kind of stuff? And he knew yeah. that if we brought this, we would talk about this beer and we would drink it and we would enjoy it. So he was right on all accounts. Yes, he was. Mm. I claim the other five. God, I knew this, you were uh, going to fifty West. Because <laughs> well, you have the power too. Well, Ooh. on that note, we're just left for scraps like dogs, Dolan. But that's okay. I'll take them. <laughs> on that note, uh, rate them. Oh boy. Uh, well. <laughs> it goes in the order if we drink them for it me. It does. It really does. It goes in order for me, too. It's, I would it's, switch the second and third one. I would I would put the red in the middle. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because mm. you don't like that floral. Mm. I'm just, I don't know. The best red is still not as good as one of the worst IPAs for me. But that's just me. <laughs> I do wonder where the floaties come from, though, in the red. Though That's interesting. I don't know. It could be some, uh, some of the grist in there. Mm. I don't know. A little pepper. A little flavor packet. <laughs> yeah, a little, <laughs> little pepper. A little flavor packet. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, sometimes saisons will have black pepper in them. Like, that's one, oh, of, the, wow. that's one of the ingredients. So, yeah. yeah. Could yeah. be, so, I don't know, who knows? All right, yeah. Maybe I need to drink more saisons then. No, you don't. <laughs> All right. Next week, we're going to hit one last Ohio beer, a beer that was brewed especially for a tragedy that happened there. All the proceeds went to uh, to helping out uh, with, with all the funds went to that. We'll talk about it more next week. Our friend Thomas Piper from Scrub Squad 1978. I believe it was his brother that had uh, that picked this up for us. Oh, okay. So uh, next week, a beer for a cause. He, I, I can't wait to drink this one. It, it looks, it reminds me of the old, remember the old cans that just said beer? Yeah. The white, the yeah, white the label, label ones, beer? Yeah. 
This one just just has the name. It's a white label. Just has the hashtag on it. Mm, cool. Daytona or uh, Dayton, Dayton Strong. Dayton Strong. Yeah. And that's it. Like it is. It is as plain as day. They wanted to just buy the beer, drink the beer, give your money to the to the cause. Cool. So it'll be a fun one next week to try that beer out. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, Brian, we're not going anywhere for a while. Let's let's drink another one of those IPAs. <laughs> Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.